A warm welcome to all of our colleagues who have joined us. Uh, it's Quality Engineering Community Day 2023 that is conducted by the Global Testing and Pro Quality Communities. We are happy to see all of you with us. Our first speaker is Srikant Mohan with the topic Test Strategies for Scaling Microservices with gRPC. Please notice that the session is being recorded and the recording will be available in a week after the session. And before we start, let me mention that if you have any thoughts or questions about the topic, please comment in the chat section while Shrikant is talking or put your questions in the Q&A tab in the top right of the page. The questions will be announced after the presentation. And returning back to the topic, Shrikant is uh, Azure Certified Cloud Solution Architect with 18 years of experience in cloud product validation. He has special interest in reliability and scalability of cloud applications and he has worked on various digital transformation projects, IoT and connected device initiatives. And he is currently with EPAM as quality architect. Now, Shrikant will share some insightful thoughts about working with gRPC. I pass the floor to you, Shrikant. Uh, thanks, Andre. And uh, thanks for the organizers for, for Quality Engineering Day. And uh, uh, thanks again uh, for providing me this platform to uh, share my experience on uh, how to uh, organize ourselves for testing gRPC. Uh, so th this uh, uh, presentation, we will go through about uh, basics about what is gRPC, how it has to be tested, uh, what are the tools available for gRPC, uh, uh, how we can do automation, and then we will uh, end up with uh, a demo on uh, how to do performance testing considerations for gRPC applications. Uh, getting on uh, uh, to know what a gRPC is all about, right? Uh, gRPC uh, is a, a protocol uh, being uh, open sourced by Google in 2015, and it is being incubated as a CNCF uh, uh, project. And uh, various companies are adapting it. The main reason uh, for the adaptation of this uh, protocol is all about uh, it uses HTTP2 and uh, it also provides a low latency and high throughput uh, transactions. So typically uh, applications which, uh, which are uh, high throughput or low latency uh, applications like uh, IoT based uh, devices uh, or financial organizations like you know uh, where the terabytes of data are getting uh, processed. So these are these are some of the silent uh, aspects for the uh, gRPC adoption, and companies like Netflix, uh, Dropbox, uh, Google itself, it's most of its platforms are being developed with uh, gRPC, and the one of the special features of this tool, uh, it uses uh, it is uh, agnostic of the platform. It doesn't uh, tie itself to a particular language. And the mode of communication it has, uh, it is in the form of a protobuf uh, buffer. So what is a protobuf? It's a uh, protocol buffer. So it is uh, the, the way the messages are being defined. It's in the binary format. And that makes a big difference in the payload or higher throughput, which it is able to achieve. We will 
can uh, uh, touch upon what is a protobuf in the coming slides but this is a higher level uh, input and uh, currently uh, grpc supports to more than 10 uh, application languages so uh, since uh, say even if you are uh, uh, server is being developed in C++, the clients can be developed in Ruby or Java or Python. It, it has close to 10 plus uh, languages support. So it's more, if you could compare yourself uh, with the regular REST, it is more like that, where it does not have a, a tied up with a particular language. We can uh, implement whatever the specification says, right? Uh, so uh, that's uh, uh, a bit of an overview on uh, gRPC. When we move down, uh, what is special uh, in gRPC, which cannot be done in uh, REST? Yeah, most of the things, the objectives might be uh, same, but how we are achieving it, it bit differs. Uh, in uh, gRPC, it supports uh, bidirectional and streaming communication, which is the reason why it is built on HTTP2. And it also supports a uh, higher level of uh, uh, stream, multiple clients and uh, simultaneous streaming operations. Uh, so that's one of the main reasons it moves in. And it also has a good amount of security aspects, which is embedded in it. So typically, gRPC communication happens in uh, three to four forms. Uh, basically, uh, the foundation lays in two. One is called a unionary, wherein uh, you send a request, I get a response. It's more, you can compare it more to a REST, where I send a request, I get a response from the client and from the server. right? And the second piece is a server streaming, wherein in server streaming, we have two types. Uh, uh, it, we can have three types of server streaming. Uh, one is client side uh, server streaming, where the client uh, uh, request and the server keeps giving you a data. So uh, something like uh, if you have an IoT device, uh, where, which is being there, we want to get a periodic update on that particular device, right? So this, uh, uh, when the call goes, the same call gets re-triggered and then the, the server keeps giving you back uh, the information without being uh, regularly called. So that's one on the client streaming. The server streaming is server asks a question to the client and client keeps giving you the response back to the server. So that's a server uh, streaming. Say if some changes in the client, uh, the server needs to get updated. So that's that's on the server streaming. And the third uh, third piece in the streaming protocols is on the bidirectional. So I keep asking you a question and you keep giving me an answer. So that's uh, on the bidirectional streaming protocol. So this is uh, very important because when we test an uh, gRPC, these types of streaming uh, differences will come. And the way we handle them is the main crux of the uh, how we go about. Okay. So we spoke about, uh, I, I briefly touched upon uh, something called a protobuf. Uh, we can compare protobuf uh, as a open specification, like a Swagger API specification, what we have for REST. It is a service definition uh, about the payload, uh, what are the methods, how the methods needs to be defined. And it also tells you the type of uh, the um, methods for the request and response, okay? And it can be defined. Like if you could see in the right hand side, uh, we are telling about it's a urinary protocol uh, with a service called get service uh, response uh, with the message as an object, request object, and the return uh, object is called a message response, which is another type of object. So this is how we get defined. And the definitions are so neat that, you know, we don't need a swagger file. So sometimes we say that, you know, uh, it provides you uh, we don't need a specific uh, documentation for it. We, we can just look into a protocol and then we can uh, really understand it. And this protocol uh, is the base uh, through which uh, our implementation of the uh, uh, services will happen. So uh, when this protocol, through this protocol, the, each of the language try to create something on something called a client and uh, a server based. Uh, so it will be useful for us to uh, really get on to the uh, uh, implementation part. So that's uh, on the protobuf. So we will have a detailed on uh, how this protobuf is going to really uh, work uh, with respect to automation, with respect to UI aspects. How are we going to validate it? We will come across that. So now we touched upon protobuf. We spoke about uh, what is gRPC, how the gRPC is going to help us. Now, 
getting on to the testing areas there are four uh, key areas uh, which are there uh, one on the functional side how we do it the second on the performance side uh, how we do it and third is test automation the fourth is security security i have not uh, mentioned this in this particular uh, demo uh, and the presentation uh, however security is one other area which we need to take care so let's move on to how this part functional can be done so uh, to demonstrate how the functional testing can be done i have uh, built a small app uh, which will do, which will have a unitary and bidirectional flows, and we are going to use a tool called um, Bloom RPC to demo it. Okay. So this is a small app uh, which being developed, right? Um, so th this app uh, has a bidirectional streaming. Uh, and uh, we uh, we will see how uh, we are going to work with that. Now I started the app. Now there are two, uh, a, the services are running in two ports, uh, uh, 50, 51, uh, and 52, right? And uh, I'll bring up. So this is a, a tool called Bloom RPC, which is also a functional tool to validate uh, uh, RPG, RPC protocol. Uh, there are other tools which are available right now in the market. Uh, this is an open source tool. Uh, the other tools like you know uh, Postman, you know, recently around three to four months back, they have started giving support for gRPC, which is quite good. And uh, for me, Bloom RPC uh, serves lots of purpose because it's uh, open source and simple to use. So what we do, uh, we have uh, these are uh, we have to import something called uh, uh, the Protos files. What we looked at, we have to import them. Uh, using uh, this import proto uh, form and then once we are done with that and then we uh, 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 the listing of the methods will be given like this so it's simple you know uh, select and uh, do right so once it has been selected and uh, it gives the methods uh, see the met uh, when you see the methods and the form in a in a part of a json file so uh, what happens internally is these messages which are in the JSON uh, will get converted into the protobuf uh, interpretations and then being sent uh, to the uh, respective servers. So all those conversions uh, happens internally for this for this tool. Uh, but these are something which we need to take care of in the automation. We will also cover that uh, during the presentation. So if you are looking at it, this is a bidirectional part. So. Now the stream has started, so the uh, it is a bidirectional. So one request, one goes as a, a, a thing, and we get a response back. And uh, we can keep adding them to the stream, and uh, we will be keep getting the stream back. Okay. So and you could see that this uh, is not ending, right? And uh, the similarly, uh, we can do that for uh, unitary. So. Yeah, so this is a stream back. It says just hello, I am so and so, right? So this is uh, uh, this is stream back, and uh, we, we have to see uh, if there are authentication required. Like you know, uh, that we can send it as a metadata uh, value in this gRPC call, like this, and uh, it can also have a TLS uh, connections. Uh, this is an unsecured connection. If it is a secured connection, you might need to give a. Uh, certificates for that right and uh, uh, we spoke about protobuf see how the protobuf the same messages are getting uh, viewed here now so this is on the grpc uh, with uh, for functional so what aspects which we need to take care uh, when uh, we are uh, looking at the grpc validation for functional side so uh, it is mostly the unitary part is most like uh, we can compare with like an rest based system and uh, the data variation again we can compare it with uh, rest based uh, protocol testing uh, like you know boundary value analysis and stuff like that uh, what key differences which will be done is on the streaming side you need to have uh, the server ready and the type of test data being set up so so as like you were your response back uh, on a streaming protocol validation needs to be uh, absolute. Okay, so there are, uh, we spoke about other tools which are there. I have mentioned few of them here. Uh, one other area we need to look into when we are looking at a functional part is on uh, the type of uh, response code which we are looking at. 
So uh, the type of response code uh, is differs from uh, regular HTTP. I have uh, mentioned the uh, reference to the link uh, where you can check on the reference code, uh, response code. And uh, the second part is how are you going to interrupt the messages between them, right? So unlike uh, we see uh, the transactions of REST-based systems, uh, like we, we can have a proxy or we can see it in the uh, browser, uh, it doesn't work like that for gRPC protocols. Uh, we need to have something uh, like a gRPC proxy, which we need to put, uh, which we need to set up specifically uh, to trap the messages calls. And uh, that is something uh, differs a lot. And uh, even if you do a, a transaction on the UI uh, with the gRPC web protocols, we won't be able to see them. OK, so that is something we need to take care. Uh, we need to set it up and do it. Okay. So then uh, let's move on to automation side. Um, for test automation, uh, it is key. Uh, there is not a ready-made uh, automation framework available in the system right now. So even in the market, you cannot go and pick it up something like REST Assured or REST-based protocol, right? So you don't have a ready-made system ready. So sometimes you need to build it from scratch. So when you are building that, uh, what are the things you need to take care, right? So the first piece is uh, each of the protobuf messages uh, has to be converted into a specific language-based client files. So that is a conversion which we need to do. That's in the point one. There are, uh, this is a command which I use uh, to do it. And we will have two sets of files which will be given. One, one of the output is for the message details, like, like uh, you know, that how my request will be. It's about the request object and the, and the response objects, what we will be getting. The second piece of the file will contain the stubs. Stubs are, uh, are the methods through which we will communicate with the server for that particular service. So that's important. And through these files is what we will get. For each proto file, we will be able to get generated with two sets of uh, uh, Python files. Uh, we will get it. And uh, the second piece towards it is a channel connection. So you have to think channel as a medium of connectivity between your client and the server. Uh, so the channel connection is where you know we can have it as a secure channel or insecure channel. For an insecure channel, we don't need to provide any certifications. For the secure channel, we need to provide uh, authentication and certifications towards that. That might end up a bit tricky. Uh, depends upon the endpoints. Okay, so that's again an area where you need to look into. The, the next area is on uh, the payload part. Uh, we, I spoke to you on how the method conversion needs to happen. Uh, you know, um, messages, uh, we can provide that in a JSON form, uh, but that needs to be converted into a message for that particular service, uh, for, for that particular service. So that conversion you need to do. And uh, the same, when the message response is coming back, how are you con going to convert it into your JSON form. So that two aspects of it, you need to take care while doing uh, automation development. The next piece is on the uh, authentication. So if you could see, remember the auth method or the method, uh, you know, metadata, which I showed in the Bloom RPC, it's the same. Uh, how, are, how am I going to send it uh, when, during my call? So when we are invoking a gRPC call, there is some uh, keyword called meta, metadata, which, which can be as added as an extra field in this connection, uh, we can send it through that. And uh, the next piece is on the sync and async operation. So gRPC, uh, you can see a lot of its implementation in the sync operations, as well as async operations. Async has been a bit more than that, more than uh, synchronized op operations, because uh, microservices, event-driven architecture, so most of them will be an async. So we have both the support. So when you are uh, developing your framework, again, take care uh, whether your uh, methods are sync or async. Based on that, your the libraries which you need to use will differ. Uh, the next piece is on the unitary and the streaming operations. So unitary and streaming operations have a good amount of a difference. Why? Uh, because you know unitary is one call, streaming is a series of calls, right? So uh, how that needs to be looked at is again a big area which uh, you need to take care while building a framework. The last is on the reflections. So reflections is a quite a good topic. I have not covered in uh, uh, in this presentation, but however, 
uh, in reflection uh, using reflections you don't need to have a protobuf file at all uh, if you know the server has been enabled with a reflection we can just connect to the endpoint and then start uh, working on the methods uh, so we don't need extra files like you know uh, the uh, uh, the proto files and stuff which will be a bit on a overhead so that's a good area uh, which i have not shown here let me show you a bit on uh, whatever i spoke about automation i'll show you a bit on uh, the tooling side part of it how uh, it's been returned a uh, few of them right uh, which will give you an uh, view so i i spoke about the streaming and the uh, unitary protocol if you could see here uh, that this is a uh, a unitary protocol conversions which I am doing, and here it's where the metadata uh, where I am passing. So if there's an authentication information, you need to pass it like this. If you're looking at the streaming, I'm not looking at. So I'll be keep sending it, and then I wait for the reply. So again, that's something which I have given, and again we can send the metadata like this, right? So this is very important uh, while uh, uh, doing it. And uh, when we spoke about channel creation here in secure, I have created only in secure here, but uh, in the real projects, you will have secure. Uh, you need to pass on the values into it. It's again something which you need to take care. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, I, I will show you about the application part also. So now you, when you are looking at here, uh, it's one of the services which I have built. Uh, so if you are look, uh, if you are seeing the message class creation, uh, and uh, yeah, so if you, these are the files which will say that yeah, I am taking this, and the function files also I have been mentioning it here. So how the stubs are getting created? It's a stub and the channel. I create a stub from the method which I created from the uh, uh, proto file, and I, I pass a channel to it. And then the, what is the response I'm going to get? That also I'm providing. It. So these are few aspects you need to, uh, you know, uh, take care uh, um, uh, while doing it. Uh, let's see uh, whether we can have a small test, right? Uh, so it, it, this test will pass because uh, we we have built it. It's a very small test, just checks whether it works. Uh, so. in some time to initiate okay so uh, as it goes i think it should be done in a minute yeah it passed so it's a simple test uh, to get on to it uh, yeah uh, it just connects to the server which is running and then completes the operation so so this is this is all uh, with uh, the automation part now the final part and the most interesting part is on the performance side so performance testing is very key when we are looking at any microservices based systems or cloud scaling systems so how are, am i going to look at for uh, grpc uh, the type of uh, first comes the tooling what type of tool can support a grpc based system for testing that so jmeter uh, supports uh, grpc but doesn't support the streaming protocol op operations right now uh, load runner is providing i think neo load also has provided and uh, you be uh, i have used with gatling gatling being a bit useful because it's all programmatic so we can can control the connection again again grinder being an open source tool again it can it will support uh, but other uh, other than that uh, the uh, most of the other tools are still in the process of uh, providing it okay so that's on the tooling side right in this example i'm going to go uh, go with uh, k6 and it will only support right now with unary uh, they are saying that they will be supporting with the streaming very soon but i have not seen that until now and uh, when we are looking at uh, the scenario part what type of scenario i need to uh, uh, concentrate on so when picking up a scenario we need to see what is a silent aspect of grpc and uh, what are the methods and the mediums it takes and based on that we need to build it so one is on the concurrency correct uh, you know uh, connection concurrency why connection concurrency is so uh, grpc protocol uh, multiplex uh, the calls into a one single connection and sense and it has a limit of the connections to 100 so if there are a large set of 
uh, operations how that scaling will be uh, you know uh, planned is needs is a area where we need to uh, look up and the message sizing limit so it follows something called the uh, uh, http2 follows something called a flow control this is a in inherited mechanism and how that needs to be looked at we need to uh, take a call of it right so uh, and uh, uh, the finally on the uh, throughput and messages and uh, how fast it can be you know uh, multiple connections and client how it needs to be validated uh, it needs to be uh, taken care okay so that's a very crux of it but i uh, due to the advent of the time right i am not able to explain more uh, so uh, let me show you a last piece of it um, so let's complete it with a small demo here otherwise we are done so it's a small k6 run uh with in here so it's done uh, with the response and request and uh, we are seeing the averages i think uh, that's the uh, uh, end of my presentation i hope uh, people uh, uh, have benefited from this presentation yeah thank you sirkan for the presentation and uh, let me ask a few questions from the chat the first question is what would you recommend us to learn creating grpc automation framework from scratch no uh, sorry uh, andre what is the question yeah what you would uh, recommend to learn creating grpc automation uh, framework from scratch yeah so uh, some of the basic points i have given here uh, uh, we can start with grpc lib uh, as a documentation piece it's a, it's a wrapper around grpc python protocol uh, if you are using python that's a good thing and the grpc.io provides a lots of inputs uh, how grpc needs to be done uh, or uh, learn about grpc that's another area where you can look at and uh, uh, now uh, the framework development uh, there are a couple of tools uh, k6 which i showed you can also be used for uh, uh, for functional automation that's again a tool which we can write it in javascript uh, which can be utilized so these are few things uh, which you can take it up yeah thank you shifan and we have a few questions more uh, dear colleagues um, i invite you to join our discord channel and visit our voice engineering stream channel uh, when shrikan will try to answer as many as possible questions as you have so um, you can find the questions after the after the talk uh, in a few minutes and uh, listen to these answers. And I would like to thank you for the presentation, Shrikal, Shrikant. Also, we appreciate our audience for watching and for their questions. Feel free to leave your questions on the agenda page, if any. And moreover, join us on our social media platforms for more updates and engaging discussion by the links in the chat and we will look forward to connection with you. And finally, we would like to invite you to join us for the next talk on the topic Need for Independent QA in Data Center Migration Project by Aritra Majumdar. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.